The six months ending January 1967 was a significant stage in the progress of the Anglo-French Concorde supersonic airliner. Here at Sud Aviation Saint-Martin-Toulouse factory, the first prototype, 001, was practically completed as an airframe structure during this period. This is how 001 looked at the beginning of the period, mid-1966. Construction work was on program then, it is still on program now, and the target date for 001's first flight remains the 28th of February, 1968. Production of major structural components for the prototypes has been allocated to various factories. This is one of the assemblies, the fuselage nose, built at British Aircraft Corporation's Weybridge factory. A similar subdivision of work will be followed in series production of the Concorde, with individual factories providing components for both the British and the French final assembly lines. At another BAC factory at Preston, the rear fuselage assembly was produced. In the making of this and the other Concorde components, new production problems were met. This is inevitable in the manufacture of an aircraft prototype, particularly the prototype of an aircraft as advanced as the Concorde, the world's first supersonic airliner. But the problems were overcome. The components were completed and delivered on time. One of the largest components is the aircraft fin, another BAC Weybridge built assembly. The fin, like the wing and other highly loaded areas, has its skin panels integrally milled from the solid metal billet for maximum strength. The movement by road of the large sub-assemblies was in itself a considerable transport operation involving careful planning and timing. This is the start of a typical road lift, the departure from the Weybridge factory of the 001 nose assembly. Its destination was the BAC Filton Division at Bristol. Smooth going for the Concorde Finn on the westbound motorway. Arrival at Filton of the 001 rear fuselage assembly from Preston. All British built components for 001 were equipped here before being dispatched to Toulouse. It is at Filton that the second prototype, 002, is being built. And this huge aircraft assembly hall will be the home of the British production line for Concorde. The nose assembly from Weybridge was one of several large sections which converged on Filton in the space of a few hours in August. But at the end of August, a special airlift from Filton to Toulouse had to be laid on. The aircraft used for this operation was a Belfast military transport made available by the Royal Air Force. And the component was the tail fuselage. It had to go by air because during the rush of return from holidays traffic in France at that time, the movement of heavy loads by road is banned by the French police. It was essential that the component reach Toulouse on the 31st of August. Otherwise, Sud Aviation would have lost precious days on the production schedule. And even as preparations for this Belfast airlift were going ahead, another French component for 002 reached Filton, Section 20 a fuselage and wing assembly made at Sud Aviation's Saint-Nazaire works. On the morning of the 31st August, the Belfast prepares to take off from the Filton airfield, scene of many historic flights. In 1968, at the end of September of that year, this same airfield will see the first flight of the second Concorde prototype. In the meanwhile, the Belfast helps to get at least a section of Concorde airborne. In two hours' time, the tail fuselage will be at Toulouse, and thanks to the RAF, that all-important program date will have been met. Some three weeks later, the Filton-built forward fuselage for 001 left for Toulouse. This time, the movement was by road in a special vehicle built to the Filton Transport Department's own design. Again, the month end saw an arrival from France, another large centre fuselage wing section for 002. 
It is sometimes suggested that there must be special difficulties in assembling an airframe from components made in separate factories hundreds of miles apart and in different countries, but this is not so. At Filton, French-built and British-built components fit smoothly into place on the final assembly jig as the second prototype begins to take shape. Perfect mating of the components is ensured by the use of established manufacturing techniques that would still be needed even if the individual sections were built in adjoining shops. The Filton assembly jig, September 1966 the aft section of 002. The scene in December. Although outwardly there is not much visible change, a vast amount of detail work has been done. New Year's Day 1967. The last of the major British built components for 001, the Finn, leaving Bristol on its way to France. Six hundred miles away in Toulouse, work on the first prototype was even further advanced, necessarily so, to meet its earlier flight date. This was how 001 looked in September, already recognizably an aeroplane. French aircraft workers on the Concorde production jig at Toulouse have come to recognize and respect the skill of men they'll probably never meet the aircraft workers of Britain, who produce some of the components they're now working on. There's the same healthy respect at Filton for the craftsmanship of the French. It is well to remember that the work of the production men has been made possible and practicable by the years of effort put into Concord research and development by thousands of other workers in laboratories, wind tunnels and drawing offices. Because of their work, an airliner that would have seemed a dream a decade ago today takes solid form on the shop floor. and already out of the jig, the port bay. During these six months, testing and development of the Concorde's Olympus 593 turbojets has made rapid progress. A Vulcan bomber, adapted by Bristol Sidley as a flying test bed for a production type 593, has been used to explore the engine's subsonic flight envelope and for air intake testing. And Snecma's research center at Villaroche near Paris is playing a major role in the comprehensive Olympus ground test program. Back to Toulouse for a last look at 001 in January 1967 and a final reminder that if engineers and production workers were busy in these six months, so too were the sales force. In that time, nearly 20 Concorde options were added to the growing list, and there are many more to come. <laughs>